Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, I decided to do a top 10 favorite uh, comedy films of all time. And uh, so let's get to it. Uh, number one, I'd say, is uh, Superbad, uh, released in 2007. Of course, it's uh, directed by Greg Matola, I think that's how you say his name. It is, of course, written by Evan Goldberg and Seth Rogen, who are best friends. Uh, who were best friends for a very, very long time. And the characters, Seth and Evan, are uh, based off of their names. And um, they were actually writing the script for this when they were in middle school, and they were best friends for, I don't even know how, how I don't even know how long, but a very long time. They started writing this, like, when they were 13, and it's amazing, and uh, very good writing here. Uh, it's very funny, it's hilarious. Uh, Jonah Hill, Michael Sarah, Christopher Mintz Plus, uh, they all have great chemistry together on set and screen, or whatever you want to call it. And it has some very good actors in here, too. Bill Hader from Saturday Night Live. Uh, Emma Stone, her first film, as well as Christopher Mintz Plus. This is hers, his first film uh, that he did. And uh, also has Seth Rogen himself in it as a cop, Officer Michaels. And, uh, yeah, it's just all in all just a great, great film. It's definitely a coming-of-age, uh, end-of-high-school type of movie. And it's one of those movies that you always remember for your, from your childhood and everything. It's just one of those movies that really sticks with you, um, you know, as a teenager and as, like, a young man like myself. But, um, yeah, very good movie. I highly recommend this one. And, uh, number two on the list is, uh... Uh, probably my favorite Will Ferrell movie, and that is Step Brothers, of course, with him and John C. Riley, his friend. Um, this is also from uh, Appetite Productions, and I also forgot to mention that Superbad is also from uh, Appetite Productions as well. And um, this one, of course, is uh, directed by Adam McKay, a very good movie. This includes the R rated and unrated versions. Um, has a whole bunch of great. Uh, people in here, Richard Jenkins, uh, Mary Steenburgen, um, I think it's how you say your name, or, or Bergen, or something like that, um, Adam Scott, was hilarious, uh, he's been in a lot of good films, um, but yeah, this is funny, um, a lot of, uh, memorable scenes in this one as well as Superbad, um, and, uh, yeah, this is all in all, it's a really fun movie, and I highly recommend it if you liked, uh, Talladega Nights, and, uh, stuff like that, it's a very, very good one. Number three, uh, one of my all-time favorite childhood uh, film franchises of all time, and that is uh, the Ghostbusters series. Um, this is the double pack. I had originally like these two. Uh, these are not in, uh, the the ones I did reviews on were not in this, not like in these like you know slim uh, cases. They're actually like in like um, bigger cases, but actually I had to toss those because they were all damaged and stuff like that, but I bought it, I bought them over with this one, it's very cool, it even has, um, pretty cool stuff in here, it has, like, the movie scrapbook, here's the front side, and, uh, here's the back, Stay Puft, Marshmallow Man, all that good stuff, and, um, it shows you, like, sketches and, like, um, artwork of, like, the monsters and, like, the Ghostbusters themselves and everything, so it's actually a pretty cool item to actually own, and, um, I definitely, uh, do believe that this, uh, gift set will be worth, like, hundreds of dollars maybe one day. Um, I know it's, like, worth, like, probably, probably, like, maybe, like, ten dollars now, but I think somewhere down the line in the far future it would be worth, like, over a hundred dollars. Like, I guarantee it, because it's, uh, such a very popular series that when there's a, such a popular franchise like this, uh, uh, they tend to go out of print and, uh, all that stuff, like, uh, years down the line. Um, but yeah, very, very good set right here. Comes with the first two, um, and then, uh, yeah, like, it's just, uh, all in all, it's a really good, uh, movie franchise. Love these growing up as a kid. Um, and it was, uh, produced and directed by Ivan Reitman, who directed both films, and it was written by, um, Hale Ramis and Dan Aykroyd for, uh, these two movies, uh, they wrote these, they also wrote the, uh, The Real Ghostbusters, the animated series, which I believe I've talked about before, um, but yeah, that's a very good show. I'm still watching that on Netflix, so if you guys are interested, if you haven't seen that show, definitely look up on Netflix, uh, The Real Ghostbusters, and, uh, yeah, I highly recommend it, it's a good watch, uh, good show too, by the way. Um, yeah, like, great cast, you know, you got Bill Murray, uh, Dan Aykroyd, Harold Ramis, Rick Moranis, Andy Potts, Sigourney Weaver, you know, you get the whole shebang with the cast, and, like, and the ghosts in here and the monsters are, were very cool looking for their, for, for their time, 
uh, when these movies came out in the 80s. Um, and uh, Ghostbusters was one of the first movies that ever scared me. Uh, not the whole movie scared me, but like just like certain ideas, like the music in the beginning of the first film, like it's just like so eerie that like you might not think it's actually supposed to be a comedy, like you think it might be just like a scary movie, like from the start. Uh, but it's actually not really scary. At all. I mean, like there are some scary moments in it, but it's overall not supposed to be known as like uh, horror or anything. It's uh, supposed to be funny, but uh, yeah. Uh, back then, when I was younger, like when I saw this like I saw this when I was about like five um I didn't really understand it that much so you can tell that uh, you can understand why like kids uh, who see it like around those age brackets are not gonna really like fully like understand what's going on and also like the scene when uh, Dana gets kidnapped by um uh what's it called uh Zool you know like those demon dogs that come out of like the statues and everything and they possess uh um Dana and, and uh, Louis Tully um yeah, that part got to me too, um, but other than that, like, uh, all, everything else didn't bother me at all, um, but, uh, yeah, it's a very, very good film set, and the scene in the second woman that scared me was, um, I believe when, uh, yeah, the scene when they're in the sewer, and they, and they have, like, an illusion, like, it has, like, all those, like, um, dead people's heads, like, on six and everything, like, like, that kind of creeped me out when I was a kid, like, when I first saw, I remember seeing that on television, and, um, it just kind of, like, creeped me out, um, but, uh, yeah, it's a very, very good film set, uh, you definitely gotta check these out if you haven't, um, there's also a set that's on Blu-ray, and the Blu-rays are apparently in 4K, I don't have those, but eventually I'll get those someday, so, uh, yeah, and the next series is, uh, the Friday Trilogy, uh, this one only has, uh, the director's cut that was released in 2009 of the original Friday. Um, this is just, like, um, alternate, like, opening of the film and, like, extra scenes that didn't, uh, make it to the theatrical cut. Um, and I'd say that the, I prefer the theatrical cut over this one, to be honest with you. And also, actually threw it out, like, the director's cut, because it's all scratched up and stuff, and also, like, the discs are, uh, chopped onto each other. I really hate that. Like, I didn't really care about it, like, back then when I first bought it, but now I do, so I'm definitely gonna buy the set over, well, not, not like the set itself, you know what I mean? It's just, like, the movies, like, individually. Um, but, uh, yeah, very, very funny, uh, stoner flicks, uh, you definitely want to check these out, um, Ice Cube, uh, wrote the, uh, story for all three of these movies, and is working on the fourth one last Friday, supposedly, Chris Tucker's coming back, can't wait for that, there's also a clip of that online, uh, it's a scene with Day Day and, uh, um, the girl that was always harassing him, uh, Baby D, yeah, it's very funny. Definitely check that out on YouTube if you guys get a chance. Um, but yeah, uh, it was written by uh, Ice Cube, and DJ Pooh. Um, you know, they did a great job with these. Um, just uh, all in all, it's great, great movies. Number five is the original Dumb and Dumber. This only has um, these two. Uh, this is the prequel, Dumb and Dumber, when Harry met Lloyd. This is on one disc. I don't care for this one. Uh, it's very disappointing. Um, I think that they should just like like left this one alone. This one needs to be forgotten. It's horrible. Um, but the first one is uh, the best one. There's also a sequel to it too, which I thought was better than this one. Um, you know, uh, that one makes the second one look, look like a masterpiece. It's that bad. <laughs> um, but uh, the first one is definitely the best. I'll have to. I'll actually have to like replace this one maybe someday. I give it to my library or something, um, because, like, I just want to have, like, the first one. I don't really want this in my collection anymore. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a very good one. Jim Carrey, Jeff Daniels, um, you know, just a very, very good movie. Um, put out by New Line Cinema. It has some, uh, special features on here. Um, only, like, production notes and the theatrical trailer, but that's it. But it's at least, uh, at least you have something on there than, than, uh, not having anything on there at all, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah. My favorite scene is the one where he sticks his tongue to the, uh, uh, chairlift pole. And, uh, yeah, this is very funny. And then, let's see, what number are we at? Number six is the original scary movie, uh, the best one in the series, I'd say. Um, 
And, uh, yes, yeah, this is done by the Waynes brothers. Uh, they're hilarious as all hell. Uh, Marlon is a shorty, and uh, Keenan is uh, right here. Uh, I can't remember his character's name, but uh, he's also very funny in it as well. Also has some great people in here. Regina Hall. Um, you got, uh, what's her name? Anna Ferris. Um, Kurt Fuller. Um, let's see who else has been here. Let's see. Oh yeah, Sean Wayne's who did that's uh Sean Wayne, my bad. Um but Keenan is there, you know, other brother. Uh but he only directed this one. Uh, but Sean Wayne is this guy right there for those wondering. Um, but, yeah, it's uh, very funny. Uh, one of the better uh, spoof films, in my opinion. Uh, this is actually pro probably, like, one of, like, the top best uh, spoofs of all time. Uh, it's better than um, Disaster Movie and uh, Day Movie. Uh, Meet the Spartans, Epic Movie, and Superhero Movie, I'd say. Um, not saying that those movies are bad, but... Um, I just think that this movie series was a lot better than all those put together. That's probably just me, but, you know. But, yeah, it was uh, given a thumbs up by Roger Ebert and Good America Called It F Funny. Good Morning America Called It Funny. It's put out by Dimension Home Video. Um, very good movie company, by the way. They put out some very good work. So, uh, yeah, definitely check it out if you're looking for good raunchy comedy there. Seven's Mel Brooks' uh, Spaceballs, uh, Star Wars parody, definitely one of the better uh, spoof films ever made. Uh, Mel Brooks, hilarious guy. Um, surprised he's still alive right now. Uh, rest in peace to his wife. Um, yeah, this is uh, produced and directed by Mel Brooks himself, which of course stars Mel Brooks, Rick Moranis, John Candy, Bill Pullman, um, let's see, uh, John Rivers. Um, as the voice of, uh, Don Matrix, who's, like, the spinoff of, uh, C-3PO. Um, there's, uh, Daphne Zaniga, I think that's how you say her name. Uh, Dick Van Patten and, uh, George, um, Winner, I think that's how you say it. Um, but, uh, yeah, all in all, very, very good movie. Uh, I highly recommend it if you like Mel Brooks' work. Number eight is the original Porky's. Uh, this comes in a box set. I originally had, um, uh, I didn't do a review when I had the uh, old set, but I had a, I had a set that only had one and two on one disc, and you had to flip, the, you had to turn the other one over. The, you had to turn the disc over to watch the other one, but uh, yeah, I got rid of that and replaced it with this box. So it's a pretty good set. I got this at FYE um, quite a long time ago, but it was a pretty good deal too. And um, I found it online for a pretty expensive price, so then I saw it at FYE for cheap. I was like, why the hell not? Might as well get it. Um, yeah, it comes with all three films. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. And th this is the... Um, uh, um, this set is the Ultimate Collection. Uh, for the first one, it's uh, the one-size-fits-all edition for the first film. And, uh, you know... Uh, does Porky 2 the next day, uh, Porky's Revenge, which is part 3, um, yeah, very good, uh, coming of age movies, uh, very good, um, and, uh, I'd say the first one's the best, though, but definitely check those out if you like Animal House and Revenge of the Nerds, stuff like that, <clears throat> And number nine is uh, the Hangover, the original one. Uh, I had that. I had that set that was like it was like the extreme edition, but I ended up tossing that because I actually want to buy uh, the DVD and the Blu-ray uh, combo pack. So um, I don't have it, but um, for those who have been on my channel for a while, do know that I did have it, but now I just don't have it with me. But yeah, one of the all-time uh, funniest films of all, t of all time, definitely without a doubt. Um, you know, I, I must have seen that one, like, over hundreds of times. It's, like, that good. And number ten is The 40-Year-Old Virgin, directed by Judd Apatow. It stars, of course, Steve Carell, uh, Seth Rogen, um, what's his name? Uh, 
I'm trying to think of the guy's name right now. Uh, Paul Rudd, there we go. And um, uh, Catherine Keener. And uh, it's also produced by Judd Apatow himself and written by Steve Carell and Judd Apatow. Um, yeah, this is the theatrical cut. Uh, I do have the unrated somewhere uh, in my collection uh, in my room. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this is a very, very funny movie. Uh, when I first watched this, I was, like, laughing, like, out loud. I must have seen this film, like, over, uh, 40 times or something. It's that funny. And, uh, if you like Super Bad, Knocked Up, this is 40, then definitely check this one out. It's a very, very good watch. So that is the end of my collection of, uh, my top ten favorite comedy films of, of all time. Uh, this is probably, like, the longest video I've ever made, and I apologize, uh, for making a very long video, but I just wanted to kind of talk about uh, the movies and why, like, they're on my list and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you guys have any uh, lists of your favorite comedy movies or any type of movie genre in general, uh, let, me know down, let me know down below, and I'll uh, look forward to seeing uh, your guys' favorite films, um, certain genre or of all time, whatever you want to do. So, uh, yeah, until next time, guys, I'm out.